Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we learned about the reduction pattern of the number of connections in ROM matrix. From this session onwards, we will mainly focus on the decoder combinational circuit within the ROM chip. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now, if you all remember, during the construction of decoder, we first took the demultiplexer, also known as the data distributor, because in this combinational circuit, based on these select lines, the input can be propagated to any one of the output lines. Now, during the session of introduction to primary memory, we changed the input line of this circuit into an enable line. And finally, when we convert these select lines into input lines, the circuit becomes a decoder circuit. And we deduce that the decoder is basically the demultiplexer without any data input. Now, let's reconsider the actual truth table of this particular decoder circuit for a moment, shall we? So, if we observe closely, in reality, O0 produces 1 for this entire sequence 1, 0, 0. That is, E is 1, I1 and I0 are zeros. Similarly, to be really accurate, O1 produces 1 for this entire sequence 1, 0, 1. That is, E is 1, I1 is 0 and I0 is 1. Now, for O2 to be activated, we need this entire sequence 1, 1, 0. That is, E is 1, I1 is 1, and I0 is 0. Finally, O3 will generate 1 for this entire sequence 1, 1, 1. That is, E, I1, and I0 all are 1s. So, to be precise, O0 actually is E and I1 bar, I0 bar. O1 actually is E and I1 bar, I0. O2 is E and I1, I0 bar. And finally, O3 actually is E and I1, I0. Now, the question remains, why are we so much interested about this E? And the answer to that question is, during implementation, E is sometimes considered as input line. Let me illustrate that. Consider this combinational circuit. We are to determine the function f. Now observe, this is a 2 to 4 decoder and the OR gate is attached to the output lines O1 and O2. And interestingly, along with the inputs A and B, which are given to the decoder through the I1 and I0 input lines respectively, the input C is fed through the enable line. So basically, O0 is E and A bar B bar. And since C is being fed through the enable line E, it's actually C and A bar B bar. So, O1 is C and A bar B, O2 is C and A B bar, and finally, O3 is C and A B. So, F becomes O1 or O2. In other words, C A B bar or C A bar B. Now, if we take C common out of these two, it becomes C and A bar B or A B bar, which actually is C and A X or B. And thus, we determine F. So, this is how the enable line can be used as input and this ability comes very handy during the expansion of decoders. Now, expansion of decoder is a phenomenon where using decoders of lower configuration, we can construct a decoder with higher configuration. Let me explain. Suppose we are going to construct a 2 to 4 decoder with 1 to 2 decoders. Now clearly, 2 to 4 configuration is higher than 1 to 2. Let's take a closer look at a 1 to 2 decoder. In this, we will have one input line, one enable line, which gives us the output line O0, which actually is E and I bar, and the output line O1, which is again E and I. Now, logically, when we feed 0 through E, O0 will be activated for the sequence 0, 0, and O1 will be activated for the sequence 0, 1. 
On the contrary, if we feed 1 through E, O0 will be activated for the sequence 1, 0 and O1 will be activated for the sequence 1, 1. So basically, based on what is being propagated through the enable line, we can figure out the proper input sequences which are needed to activate the desired output line. And this is the basic structure of a 122 decoder. Now let's move on to the construction of the 224 decoder. In a 224 decoder, as we all know, there will be three input lines, including of course the enable line as well, and four output lines. Now let's dive into the internal architecture. If you observe, there are four output lines and we are to construct this 2 to 4 decoder with the help of 1 to 2 decoders. So, we will need two different 1 to 2 decoders in order to cover these four output lines. Now, to control these two, we will need another 1 to 2 decoder. Now, why so? It will be clear in a moment. We just learned that based on what is being fed through the enable line, we can determine the input sequence for the desired output line, right? So if we feed O0 of this decoder to this enable line and O1 to this particular enable line, let me show you what happens. We all know O0 is supposed to be activated for the input sequence 0, 0 of I1 and I0. O1 will be activated for the input sequence 0, 1. O2 will be activated for the input sequence 1, 0. And O3 will be activated for the input sequence 1, 1. Now observe, if through I1 we feed 0, due to the activation of O0, this decoder will be enabled and thus we get to activate either output line O0 or O1 of this 2 to 4 decoder as in both the cases, I1 happens to be 0. On the other hand, if we feed 1 through I1, O1 will be activated, which will then enable this decoder, giving us the choice of activating either the output line O2 or O3. Because if you observe, for both these lines, I1 happens to be 1. Now for all these, if you observe I0, for O0 and O2, it's 0. And for O1 and O3, it's 1. And we get to activate any one of the lines of either O0 and O2 or O1 and O3, depending on whichever decoders been enabled due to I1. So we feed I0 to both the input lines of these decoders. And finally, the enable line is fed into the E input of this decoder. So this is the complete 2 to 4 decoder which we just constructed using 1 to 2 decoders. Now notice the procedure. We first covered all the output lines using these decoders. Therefore, we will call it level 1. And the decoder which gets the E input directly is the last level, which in this case is level 2. And interestingly, which one of the level 1 decoders will be enabled is actually decided by the output lines of the decoder of the next level, that is by the decoder of level 2. Let's now have another illustration for even better understanding. Let's construct a 3 to 8 decoder using 1 to 2 decoders, shall we? Now clearly for a 3 to 8 decoder, there will be one enable line, 3 input lines and 8 output lines. And as usual, we will begin the construction from level 1. Now think about it. There are 8 output lines, right? And one 1 to 2 decoder can cover only 2 lines. Hence, in order to cover all these 8 lines, we will need 4 1 to 2 decoders, isn't it? Now coming to the next level, that is in level 2, we need decoders to control the enable lines of the decoders of level 1. So, one decoder for the enable lines of these two decoders and another one which will be in charge of these two decoders. So, two more 1 to 2 decoders for level 2. Finally, in level 3, we will only need another decoder so that it can be in charge of the enable lines of these two decoders of level 2. 
Now, similar to the earlier illustration, the most significant bit of the input sequence, that is the input line I2, will be fed into the input line of this level 3 decoder. Input line I1 will then be fed into the input lines of the level 2 decoders. And finally, the input line I0, which happens to be the least significant bit in the input sequence, will be given to all the input lines of the decoders of level 1. Now, what about the enable input? It is going to be fed into the enable line of the decoder of the last level, that is, the level 3 decoder. Now, observe, when we feed 1 through this enable input, the level 3 decoder gets enabled, which actually enables the entire organization. Suppose we give the input 101 through the input lines. Now, for this particular decoder, since it's already enabled, Due to the input 1, O1 will be activated, which in turn will enable this decoder of level 2. Now, for this level 2 decoder, since the input propagated through I1 is 0, O0 will be activated, enabling this particular decoder of level 1. Now, for this level 1 decoder, the input propagated through I0 is 1. So, this particular output line, that is O5, will be activated. Now you do the math. The binary input sequence 101 means 5 in decimal. And yes, for the input sequence 101, the output line O5 got activated, right? So this is how we can construct a 3 to 8 decoder using 4 plus 2 plus 1 that is 7122 decoders. Now, if I ask you, in order to construct 16264 decoder, how many 3 to 8 decoders will be needed? Can you figure that out? It's actually pretty simple. Think about it. If we are using 3 to 8 decoders for the construction, 8 output lines can be covered by a single decoder, right? Therefore, hypothetically, one line can be covered by 1 by 8 decoders. By the way, which actually isn't possible, and that's why we are using the term hypothetically, just for the sake of calculation. Therefore, 64 lines can be covered by 1 by 8 multiplied by 64 decoders, that is 8 decoders to be accurate. So, in level 1, we will need 8 3 to 8 decoders. Now, let's talk about level 2. Now, all these 8 decoders of level 1 will have 8 enable lines, for which the decoders of the next level will be in charge. And since we are using 3 to 8 decoders, we know 8 lines can be covered by a single decoder. So, in total, 8 plus 1, that is 8 level 1 decoders and 1 level 2 decoder, that is in total 9 decoders are needed. Easy, right? Now, in general, if we are to construct m22 raised to the power m decoder using n22 raised to the power n decoders, let's derive how many of these are needed. Now, the configuration m22 raised to the power m can also be stated as log m base 2 to m. Because when we apply log base 2 to this order, m becomes log m base 2 and 2 raised to the power m becomes just m. Similarly, the configuration n to 2 raised to the power n can also be stated as log n base 2 to n. Now, in level 1, m output lines are covered by m by n decoders. Now, why is so? Think about it. According to this modified configuration, M is now the total number of output lines of the decoder to be constructed. And N output lines can be covered by a single log N base 2 to N decoder. Therefore, in order to cover M lines by the decoders with N output lines, we will need M by N decoders. Isn't it? Now, these M by N decoders will have M by N enable lines. And in level 2, m by n enable lines are covered by m by n divided by n, that is m by n square decoders. Then again in level 3, these 
m by n square enable lines can be covered by m by n square divided by n that is m by n cube decoders. Now suppose the last level is level k. Observing the pattern we can say the m by n raised to the power k minus 1 enable lines of the decoders of k minus 1 level can be covered by n by n raised to the power k decoders. Now think about it. In the last level, the number of decoders required will always be 1. That is, in the last level, one single decoder will be sufficient enough to cover all the enable lines of the decoders of the previous level. Therefore, the value of m by n raised to the power k can at most be 1. Hence, m is less than equals to n raised to the power k. Now, if we apply log base n to both the sides, m becomes log m base n and on the right hand side, we are left with k. Because log n base n is actually 1 and when we apply log with the same base, the exponent comes down as a multiplicative prefix. So, log m base n is less than equals to k. In other words, k is greater than or equals to this. You all know this property of logarithm, right? Where if we apply the log with the same base to this log m base n, we can rewrite it as log m base 2 by log n base 2. And for the ease of calculation, log base 2 has been applied here. Now, since we are trying to find out the least value of k, which is quite evident from the greater than equals to operator, we can state k equals to ceiling of log m base 2 by log n base 2. This means it is the maximum number of levels because if you remember, we presumed the last level would be k. Therefore, the total number of decoders required is summation k equals 1 to ceiling of log m base 2 by log n base 2 m by n raised to the power k. Basically, the number of levels which is denoted by k will start from 1 and go up to log m base 2 by log n base 2 and with the increasing value of k in each level, the value of the exponent of n will increase in each level. Well, don't worry if it feels a little complex to comprehend, we will ease it up with the next example. Let's now construct a 7 to 128 decoder using 3 to 8 decoders. We will try to figure out the total number of 3 to 8 decoders needed for this specific organization using the formula that we just derived. But before that, do remember we changed the configuration, didn't we? So for us, m is 128 and log m base 2 is 7. And this is the derived formula. Now m is 128 and n is 8. So, let's find out the number of levels first. Now, from the formula, we know this is the number of levels. That is, ceiling of log m base 2 by log n base 2. Now, observe. Since m is 128, hence log m base 2 is 7. And since n is 8, hence log n base 2 is nothing but 3. So, ceiling of 7 by 3 gives us the value 3. So, there will be 3 levels. So, the total number of decoders required can be calculated as m by n raised to the power 1 that is 128 divided by 8 to the power 1 in the first level plus m by n raised to the power 2 that is 128 divided by 8 square in the second level plus 128 by 8 cube in the third or the final level. Now, 128 by 8 is 16 plus 128 by 8 square that is 128 by 64 is 2. And finally, 128 by 8 cube that is 128 by 128 itself which gives us 1. So, in total, 16 plus 2 plus 1 that is 19 decoders. So, 19 3 to 8 decoders will be needed in order to construct 
one single 7 to 128 decoder. So this is how expansion of decoders that is higher configuration decoders are created using decoders with lower orders. And in order to find out the total number of decoders needed, we can use this formula, but do remember the change of the configuration before that. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concept of expansion of decoders is clear to you now. If you want to explore more, similar concept using multiplexures in the Max Tree series has already been beautifully explained in our digital electronics course. Go ahead and check that out. In the next session, we will learn another approach of decoder expansion. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.